Good evening. It's that time again for another episode of Let Me Tell Your Story. I'm Bavali Bernstein. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I certainly appreciate you tuning in every Saturday night right here on my Facebook page. Of course, now you can find us on YouTube at Bavali Bernstein Productions. Tonight, I'll be introducing yet another talented author by the name of Anthony Arnold, who's written an interesting short story by the title of the Phone Call. That's right, The Phone Call by Anthony Arnold. I found this story quite interesting, and perhaps you will as well. So sit back, relax, and of course, follow along as I tell the story written by Anthony Arnold, The Phone Call. It was a voice that he never thought he would hear again, and a call he never thought he would receive. As he sat here in the restaurant where he'd agreed to meet her, he wondered how his life had come to this point. Theirs was a tumultuous relationship, two strong-willed individuals neither wanting to give an inch, neither at home or work. They fought hard and loved even harder. Their love burned as hard as the sun and flamed out like a supernova. In the end, they both left the relationship broken and scared, afraid to love or trust again. It had been a 10 hard years for him. He'd not been able to commit to anyone, mainly because he still loved her. And from what he'd heard through the grapevine, she'd not done too well either. Married and divorced twice. Damn, as he shook his head, twice? Good, he thought. If I'm miserable, she should be too. Stop, that's one of the reasons that you're in this position you're in, being a smart ass. Someone caught his eye, and he saw her before she saw him. He watched her as she strolled up the street, hair and makeup exquisite, clothing well matched. He found himself smiling. Yeah, that's my baby. He banished that thought as soon as it came to his head. She no longer belonged to him. He was just someone from the past. She finally spotted him sitting at the table and made her way to him. He stood up and pulled out the chair for her. Thank you, she said as she kissed him on his cheek. She took her time looking him over. Hmm, she thought. He still looks good and smells good. What in the hell was I thinking? He felt her gaze, but he didn't really know what to say or do. Well, bring it out in the open, I guess. Why did you leave? She had to think for a moment. Why did she leave? She really didn't know. He had taken good care of her. Was she restless? She didn't know why. But while looking into his eyes, she knew he expected an answer. Oh, I don't know why now. I woke up one morning and felt something was missing. I know that you love me, but somehow that wasn't enough. I had to have more, so I left. That's one of the reasons why I called you. There's some things that I need to say to you because I may not be able to later. What do you mean you may not be able to later? What is this, some kind of confession to make me feel better? I don't need your pity. I did the best I could for you. I gave you everything you ever wanted. Not what you needed, wanted. It took me 10 long years to get over you. And, and now you just want to waltz back into my life like nothing happened? Not only no, but hell no. As he went to get up, he heard this tiny voice say something that stopped him dead in his tracks. I have HIV. You what? He couldn't believe what he'd heard. He slowly sat back down and looked at her. How? When? Where? Am I infected too? His head started to spin. He couldn't believe what she just said. She didn't look sick. Was this just a sick joke? I'm serious about this. And before you ask, no, you're not infected. My second husband gave it to me. He was a down low brother. And I didn't know until he got sick. He just passed six months ago. That's why I called you. I know I'm dying and I don't want to die alone. I wanted to spend my final days with you and try to make up for the time that I hurt you. Please, say yes. He was torn as to what to do. She had come back into his life only to leave him again. He knew that he would say yes. He still loved her and he always would. So he said the only thing he could say. Yes, two years later. They had lived a full life. They traveled the world. They did everything they could do. Once again, their love burned with a passion that was unmatched. But they both knew that the end would come and preparations were made and finalized. 
And when the end came, it did with a viciousness that neither one of them expected. One morning she became ill. He rushed her to the ER. As they ran tests, the doctors came and said, she may not make it until morning. Okay, he said, I'm taking her home. He went into the room and looked at her with tears in his eyes. She looked at him and said, Ina, can we go home? He timidly took her in her arms and carried her in her arms and drove her home. He held her in her arms for the rest of that night. They talked when she could, but he let her rest. She said one last request. Could, could he take her to the sunroom so she could see the sunrise? They sat together in the big chair facing the east. The sun rose and it was the best sunrise either one of them had ever seen. She said, Oh my, then she was gone. He held her tightly as the sun continued to rise. And at that moment, a white dove was silhouetted in the sky. He knew then that everything would be all right. Her ashes were spread over the ocean as she wished. And the money she left was donated in her name for HIV research. He knew he would always love her for always. Anthony Arnold's The Phone Call. Interesting story. Of course, if you haven't been tested, do so. And of course, use safe precaution if you're having unprotected sex. I appreciate your story, Anthony Arnold. And of course, if you have a story you'd like me to tell, send me the first two chapters or the short story to let me tell your story at hotmail.com. I'm Bavali Bernstein. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you.